Panorama TV presents How They Do That, where we explore the world of professional photographers and share their techniques with you. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hi, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode of How'd They Do That? Well, on the show this week, we have Harrison Hurwitz. Harrison's been in the business for about 27 years. He was in Philadelphia and New York. He was heavily involved in the fashion industry. He moved out here to Arizona, and now he shoots primarily commercial work and weddings. Well, we caught up with Harrison in his studio and had a great conversation. So here's that talk with Harrison Hurwitz. All right, well, here we are with Harrison. Harrison, thank you so much for letting us hang out in your studios. This is sort of a meeting space. You shoot some in here, but also on location. Is that correct? That's correct. Um, actually, the bulk of what I do is on location. On location. Well, let's go back in time a little bit and talk about how you ended up in Phoenix. Actually, we're in Scottsdale right now. Right. Um, and so you started, um, what, 27 years ago? Is that correct? That is correct. Yes. And in the East Coast, New York and Philadelphia and right. those cities. Started in Philadelphia for my first three years. Uh, got some, man some momentum shooting fashion there. Uh, and then realized, well, I'm from New York. I'm only about 100 miles away. I really need to be in New York for that. So moved back to New York. Um, got some momentum in that in New York, but also did um, public relations shoots for the Chamber of Commerce, New York City Chamber of Commerce, and right. some commercial clients, and as well as some fashion. And, uh, and, and you shoot uh, people only. Yes, Is that correct? That, that's correct. And so through your entire career, it's been people, people for all that fashion stuff, all the PR stuff. Right. And uh, so take us forward now. You land here in Scottsdale in sunny Arizona. Right. Um, and so there's not, you know, fashion here is not the same as New York, if you haven't noticed. Yeah. Um, and so how did you get from fashion and all this PR work and commercial work to shooting weddings and, and okay. that? Sure. Um, well, it actually started in New York. My first uh, brides that I worked with worked for some of the fashion magazines, and some of them knew me or knew my work and asked if I did weddings. I had done a couple. Um, I wound up doing some of theirs and found that I liked it a lot. And so that had also started in New York. And then a lot of those girls knew, you know, if a girl worked for Elle magazine, she knew girls who worked at Cosmo um, or some of the other magazines. So. Um, it kind of built on itself, so I had that going on as well. And then when I moved here, uh, I seemed to get momentum in that area the fastest and just kind of rode that wave. Right. <laughs> so. so how do you approach a wedding? Let's, let's sort of walk through how a, if a client calls you to wedding day. Sure. Can you walk us through what you do? Sure. Um, well, uh, one of the things I noticed a long time ago was that in order to get the best possible wedding pictures that I could make, I needed to establish an emotional bond um, with the bride as, as early as possible. And that way, when the wedding day rolls around, um, I'm very motivated, I'm very excited for her, I'll work, you know, I'll give 120%, so it, it's all good. So, um, How do you do that? How do I do that? Yeah, um, I well, fortunately, I like most people. I think that's yeah. maybe why I'm a people photographer and not uh, an architectural photographer. Um, and most people grow on me. So uh, it, it's kind of a natural phenomenon with me. Um, but through a series of communications, you know, the first contact with me is often by email. Um, and, you know, sometimes the brides uh, will give you a, a fair amount of information. Sometimes they won't give you too much, you know, they'll kind of want to feel you out. So it is kind of a feeling out process. Um, I also will not take a wedding if I don't feel uh, that I have an emotional connection to the bride when we have our meeting. Um, you know, I, w I won't phrase it that way, but right. I might say, um, you know, I don't know if I'm the right photographer you, for you. There's a lot of great photographers out there. Right. Um, and that doesn't happen very often because I do like most people, but, um, you know, it, there's an emotional component to all of this. Uh, okay, well, let's talk a little bit about uh, how you shoot, because you have something that is um, not unique to you, but it is uh, a little bit unique, and that is you don't shoot digital, you shoot film. Right. Uh, yeah. I wouldn't say that I don't shoot digital, <laughs> but I prefer film. Prefer film, um, okay. It's something I'm very grounded in. Um, I had a difficult time for the first three or four years. Digital came along wondering if me continuing to shoot film as much as I do and preferring it um, in many situations 
uh, was creating a dinosaur here. Right. So, um, you know, and then I came to the conclusion that no, this is just me capitalizing on my strengths and doing what I love to do, and there's nothing wrong with that. And what about film do you love? Mm -hmm. Well, it, film is, uh, it's, I, I consider it a very soulful medium. Um, every film stock has its own personality. So with digital, a lot of times you're, you're injecting a personality, so to speak, after the shoot in, you know, through Photoshop or whatever software programs you use. Um, with film, that, that's part of the package. You know, so, and also, at the time I was taught, uh, first learned photography, my first almost 20 years, digital wasn't really a viable medium. So, uh, you know, we, that's how I learned and we learned to do things in the camera and, you know. And do you do post-processing all your darkroom uh, stuff yourself or do you send that out to a, a lab? No, I have, I have a lab that's very film-centric, film very film-oriented, and uh, they do my, my processing and my scans for me. In the early days of my career, I did my own processing and printing. Um, I, and I enjoyed it for a while. You miss all the chemicals? But, uh, no, I don't miss the chemicals so much or the smells, but uh, there was something about the process that was really quite charming. And you can't beat that feeling of watching the image mm -hmm. like literally emerge. Right, in the chemical right. Area. Yeah. Yeah, I miss that as well. So all these uh, photos behind us, all film? Uh, yes, these are all film images. All film. Yeah, beautiful grain. I love this. So let's look. You have a camera here that's an old Nikon. Can mm -hmm. we take a peek at it? Yeah, sure. Um, now, Tell us the story of this guy. It's, uh, it's an FM2, <laughs> and it looks a little bit uh, used. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I finally wore this camera out after 24 years of use. Um, you know, I don't know how many shoots I do a year. You know, somewhere right. probably like 150 because I do commercial as well as weddings. Right. Um, you know, and it finally just wouldn't take another picture, but it, it really gave me... Um, a lot of great pictures, many, many years of, of great use. It's been kicked by parking lot attendants, and uh, it's got some dings on it. It's kind of worn out over here. Um, you know, and I, I love these old, fully manual film cameras. They are... Uh, They're beautiful. Yeah, you know, a lot of people ask me, um, you know, we talk about cameras a lot, and I recommend for professionals always to get a professional body Mm -hmm. And one reason is because they're metal. Right. Um, and you can see after 24 years, that's a big deal. Right. Because when you're dropping these, you can see this is sort of dinged up Absolutely. here. This is worn off. The pentaprism inside is probably immaculate. But a metal body is going to last a lot longer. Right. Um, and so, yeah, 24 years out of this, right. only 24 years out of the Tycon. Um, well, I have amazing. spares as well, <laughs> but this is my oldest, and it's the only one that I've actually gotten to the point where it's it's just worn out. And what do you shoot with now? Uh, well, I, I still like these Nikon FM2s. Mm -hmm. um, as I mentioned, I do shoot certain things digitally. Um, a lot of times for a commercial clients, it's the best way to go. And do you rent digital bodies or do you? No, I have, I have some digital um, camera equipment that I, that I use. That you use. And look, tell us a little bit about the lenses that you use. Uh, let's say specifically for wedding photography. Sure. Uh, well, a lot of my choice of lenses stems from my days as a fashion photographer when I was doing that exclusively. And um, one of the things I learned as a New York fashion photographer was that uh, there are just so many people who shoot fashion, so many that do it well, um, in order to, to be noticed at all and comprehended, you needed to have um, a particular style. And so my style evolved around using um, very few lenses, and I did not use uh, zoom lenses because a zoom lens to me is almost like a painter who uses 40 or 50 different brushes um, versus a painter who uses the same brush with a certain kind of stroke. So, if, you know, you're going to recognize that painter who uses fewer brushes. You can recognize their style quicker than a guy who's always changing brushes and right. strokes and so forth. So. Um, you know, my style was built upon basically using an 85 millimeter lens and a 50 millimeter lens, and um, not too many others. So, right, 85. Yeah. Now, do you use uh, really shallow depth of field? So, you're using like an 85 1.2, or you just yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, I like those lenses. I think um, virtually every photographer I know, um, if they can afford a, uh, a lens with a shallower depth of field that's a brighter lens, they're going right. to go, go with that. It. Okay, let's talk about the last thing now. You're shooting film. And most uh, clients, brides or corporate uh, clients, are going to want to see their images online. 
sure. or on a CD. Uh, how do you go from film to digital? What happens there? Okay, well, I, every, everything that's, when my film is processed immediately after that, it's scanned at high res by my lab, which is uh, very um, film centric. Mm -hmm. And uh, they do beautiful, nice, clean scans. And so we have a digital record. We can then do anything in Photoshop or other software that um, a digitally captured uh, image right, so can you get. You have all the same flexibility. Correct, and, and um, one of the advantages of film is that film is already color balanced. So unlike digital, um, right. sometimes I can get my, my digital images ready, especially when you're talking about a lot of images, like 600 or more images um, that you might have to go in Lightroom or Photoshop and, and work on. Um, if you have 600 or 1,000 film images, um, most of them are already color corrected, and then of course I love black and white, Right. And um, I, I really believe that uh, if you want the end product to be a black and white image, you need to be thinking in black and white. Um, I have tried to do that when, I, when I've shot digitally. It's very difficult. When I'm, when I'm using a film camera and I've got the little film tab that shows me black and white films in there, it's a lot easier for me to think in black and white and create a strong black and white image just be, because what makes a black and white image strong is very different from what makes a strong color image. So tell us about that. Is that the uh, hard light, side light, lots of shape? What is it about black and white? How do you make a, a strong black and white image? Well, color can be a distraction. Um, and so uh, with black and white, you know, you're not working with color, obviously. And so what are you working with? You're working with tones. You're working with shadow, um, varying degrees of it or not. Um, you're working with graphics, you know, converging lines, things like that tend to um, aid your composition more. You could have the same image shot in color and have those wonderful converging lines and nice light, it. but the color distracts you from, from the strength of those components. Right. I see you have a roll of film here. Can I take a look? Yeah, sure. Now this is uh, some 400TX, some Tri-X Kodak, which is Amazing stuff. So tell us a little bit more about your love of film and uh, why you shoot film. Sure. Uh, well, I grew up in New York and one of the, the, the highest peaks in New, uh, the highest peak in New York State is Mount Marcy. And the Hudson River, which I lived right next to for much of my life, um, originates on Mount Marcy and it originates uh, at a place called Lake Tear of the Clouds. Okay. And I just thought that was such a beautiful poetic name for a place. I always wanted to go there. Um, it, it stirred my imagination um, as opposed to if it was called Lake Johnson right. or, or Smith Lake. So um, film to me is very poetic in that way. Um, it has a certain magic to it. Um, you've seen it when you've worked in the dark room. You've seen that magic unfold. Um, and every film stock has its own characteristics and, and magical qualities. So it, it's kind of like Lake Tear in the Clouds. It, it right. paints a picture for me. It's more than just a, uh, an exposure that's made. It's a whole process. It's the colors. It's the grain. It's everything about that. Absolutely. I love it. I need to, can I steal this from you? Sure. Well, it's outdated. <laughs> it's outdated. <laughs> well, thank you so much for letting us hang out with you today. You're welcome. And uh, I love your work. Hopefully we can hang out some more up here in Scottsdale. Thank you, Mark. I really enjoyed it. You bet. Well, you can see more of Harrison's work on his website, HerwitzPhotography.com or just take a trip over to the Adorama Learning Center where we have some of the images that he's produced posted right there for all of you. And you can see all of the How They Do That episodes as well as other Adorama TV episodes as well. Well, thanks for joining me. I'll see you again next week. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.